My wife said to me the other day, uh, she was like, you're a born warrior. I was like, like Thor, Odin. She was like, no, you're a born warrior. I was like, oh, right. I mean, it's true, as I've got older, I worry a lot more, I worry a lot more. If we go on holiday, I like to get to the airport three hours in advance. If she could, she'd get an Uber to the plane. I like to pack a month in advance, meticulously pack, fold everything properly in the suitcase. She'll literally tip her wardrobe into three bin bags. And she'll have nothing to wear as well. That's the weird thing. But no, I'm at that age now where um, every time I have a poo, I have to look behind me to see if there's any blood in it. Uh, basically, thanks to the NHS text messaging service. My wife, for fun, likes to put beetroot in my food the night before. Just to gauge my reaction. We don't have children. We don't have children. Uh, we're those annoying couple who don't have children, but we like to tell parents how to parent. Uh, with no experience, but like Liz Truss in the economy, basically. <laughs> Our friends say to us, you'd make great parents. Yeah, maybe, but would we make great children? You know? <laughs> we, every, time our, every time our parents, our friends have babies, uh, we like to send them happy 18th birthday cards. You know, just to keep them focused. <laughs> they, say, they say children should be seen and not heard, but that's why they invented iPads, wasn't it? I mean, I've seen nine-year-olds with iPads. What the fuck? When I was nine years old, my dad gave us a box of matches, a newspaper, and told us to fuck off till tea time. <laughs> Don't get caught, you'd say. Don't get caught. There's a few plus sides to not having children. I can basically leave here tonight and go on holiday. <laughs> the house that we've worked 30 years to buy isn't fucking turned into a Toys R Us closing down sale. <laughs> I can have a shit and complete an utter piece. <laughs> and I can leave power tools plugged in on the floor next to a glass of water and an open packet of jalapeno crisps. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I was a child once, a long time ago, 20 years ago. Um, yeah, I was a child once. I, uh, I had, like, uh, ginger hair that I used to spike up. When people used to talk to me, I'd go bright red, like a fucking tomato. And I was dead skinny as well. I looked like a fucking lip match, basically. <laughs> My first job, age 11, paperboy. That's not a recyclable version of Pinocchio. That's actually a job. It was a time during the 70s when our parents were happy to send us out at 11 years old onto the streets at six o'clock in the morning to go round to strangers' houses whilst they're at home filling in our application form to Jim will fucking fix it. I mean, I can't work out whether my dad had a wicked sense of humour or was dyslexic. Every Christmas Eve, he'd leave a note on my pillow saying, ho, 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 see you tonight, Satan. <laughs> so look, look, the world's your oyster. The world's your oyster, son. He never told me he was seven months old and stuck behind a fucking radiator. <laughs> my, dad, my dad was Maltese, my mum was English. I like to think my dad's dark Mediterranean good looks, charm and wit are somewhere inside this ginger pastry sack. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd do a DNA test. Actually, I did a DNA test. I thought it was going to be a waste of money. Fifty percent Maltese, fifty percent English. No, turns out my ancestors fucked everywhere, everybody, everywhere, all the time. <laughs> West Asian, West African, Iberian, Sardinian, English, Scottish, Welsh, Ashkenazi, Jewish, and three percent Nigerian. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's confusing looking like this and knowing that everything inside of me is fucking hated by the Daily Mail and half of the USA. <laughs> and Kent. <laughs> anyway, talking of vaginas. Um, talking of vaginas. Very jealous of women. Very jealous of women. Women talk about everything. Men are closed books. We don't talk about anything. Women talk about everything. You talk about things like uh, We Escape. And I'm not talking about a breakout in a Scottish prison. I'm literally talking about escaping the wind. You know, you have adverts dedicated to this. Tenor, tenor lights. Why don't they just call those ones fivers? You know? <laughs> yeah, but men have the same problem. Just to put things into perspective, if you've ever used a garden hose, turned it off at the tap, 
You're always going to get a little bit of residual water in the eye. You know? That's men for you. All those men that wear dark suits and dark trousers and jeans, it's not for fashion. I call them camouflage pants. <laughs> Honestly, it takes a brave or a stupid man to wear cream trousers to a wedding <laughs> for fear of Australia and the Galapagos Islands. Fear of that as well. All those blokes who walk around grabbing their crotch, that's not a sexual thing. It's checking for damp. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very jealous of women, very jealous of women. Women talk about everything. The two things that women talk about that make men cringe, ironically, have the word many. Menstruation. Oh, bloody hell, say half the men here. Fucking right, say all the women. Uh, and the menopause. The menopause. I said to my wife, I said to my wife, how bad is the menopause? Stupid things to say, really, stupid things to say. So that night, she, uh, that night, she wrapped me up in six duvets, five hot water bottles, put the heating on full, gave me three Edith Piaf novels to read, and set the alarm clock to go off every hour on the fucking hour. I came home the next day, she's wearing eight jackets like she's getting on a fucking Ryanair flight. My name's Victor, thank you so much.